Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to episode 10 of the Crochet Chris podcast. My sister Lisa and I own the yarn store Anit Sheep in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And this is my space for talking about my efforts to build my crochet closet, which if you've seen the last podcast is what I've recently figured out my podcast is actually going to be about. So I'm in the backyard again because the consensus was that my video looks better when I film outdoors and honestly I can't argue with that. You can't beat natural light. Um, however, it is probably going to rain so we're going to try to zoom through this before the rain actually starts. So let's just go ahead and jump right in to talking about um, my current project. So I am working on, yes, another fingering weight sweater. I did decide that I would um, work a season or two ahead in my makes because I felt like trying to make summer things right now um, I felt kind of a time crunch I felt the pressure to just like turn it around so that I could wear it like tomorrow instead I will be able to take my time and plan out my designs and figure out all the things that I need to figure out along the way so I did want to start off the right way and I got myself measured. I got measured to within an inch of my life. I got measured according to two different schema because my mother is following Shannon Mullet Bowlesby's videos on Blueprint and learning some design things from them. And I'm, I've been reading um, Custom Crochet Sweaters by Dora Orenstein and each designer has their own list of measurements that they recommend you take. Um, while there is a lot of overlap, you know, bust, hips, waist, um, there were some measurements that were unique to each designer, so I got measured according to both lists. And this is my design book, and what I've just done is stuck a little envelope in there, and I keep my measurements in here so they will always be on hand when I'm ready to work. So this is the top that I'm making, and it's going to be three colors, so the sleeves and the upper body will be one. All of these, con all of these stripes will be contrast so the neckline, the stripe across the bust, and the waist will be a second color. And then this bodice here will be a third color. And that um, design came about for a very specific reason. So I will show you what I'm using. This is my poor little mangled ball. I'm not using my yarn sleeve, and that's why my poor ball of yarn looks so terrible. But this is um, Wool Like from Michaels. It's 8515 acrylic nylon. Um, so this will be my sleeves and my upper body. Um, my contrast color will be this beautiful burgundy that's also a wool like. And then the bodice will be this traveling yarn company yarn that I got from the Jimmy Bean subscription box. Um, let me show them to you together so you get an idea. I think they look really nice together. Um, I thought about using like um, a stark white because if you remember, I have a lot of um, wool like and I have it in white too, but I was worried that it would read a little, my sweater would read a little too Christmassy if I use like a bright, bright white. So I just decided to mute that neutral a little bit and use more of like this oatmeal color. And I came up with that design because I had this one skein of hand dyed yarn and I wanted to challenge myself to use it in some way other than looking for a one skein project right I didn't want to just make basically an accessory I didn't want to make um, a, a shawl or a cowl or fingerless gloves or a hat or whatever the things that you know we typically do with a single skein right because we end up with these really pretty skeins that we get attached to but then we get them home and we don't know what to do with them. And I wanted to try to do something other than making an accessory. There's nothing wrong, wrong with this accessories, but I really wanted to give my single skeins of beautiful hand dyed yarn an opportunity to shine. And I thought I would also get more wear out of them because I will likely wear the garments that I make more often than I wear any particular accessory that I make. And I think that color blocking the way I'm doing with this sweater is what I'm is the answer to what I'm calling the single skein dilemma, right? So you have that one beautiful skein of yarn and you don't know what to do with it. And the fact is you don't have to use that one yarn to make your whole item, whatever that item's going to be. So I decided that by combining it with some other yarns, I can still get a garment out of this single skein. Now, one thing Jimmy Beans does is they will give you, it give subscribers an opportunity to purchase this yarn if all of their boxes don't 
sell out. So they did send an email where I had opportunity to buy more of this yarn. I believe it was at $26 a skein. And I was very, very tempted because I, I had lacked a little faith in my color blocking scheme. Um, my concern is having enough yarn to do um, the bodice piece front and back out of this one skein. I'm gonna try to, I might widen that stripe that I have here and try to shrink down the, the amount of square space that I need to um, make out of this one yarn. So hopefully I will be able to stretch this to make the bodice out of, for the front and the back. If not, I have a backup plan. I will just make the back piece of the bodice out of a blue wool like that is similar to the blue that is in this. So the back will be all solid colors and the front will have the variegated. And I think either way, it's just going to make this yarn really stand out and become the feature of that sweater. And I'm just really excited about having the opportunity to use that yarn in a garment rather than making an accessory. So I started it and let me tell you, I have struck upon a crochet mystery and I'm really hoping that someone out there will be able to help me figure out what I was doing wrong. So I decided I wanted to do this all the right way. I made my swatch. So this is the wool like in the beige. I used a 2.75 millimeter hook and it's just all single crochet as you all know i have fallen in love with all single crochet i think it just gives you a beautiful fabric and i followed the recommendations jenna mullet bowlsby makes in his book the complete crochet course for how to measure my crochet swatch so instead of trying to figure out you know measure off four inches in either direction on the swatch what he says to do is measure the whole swatch right take your width take your height and then count your stitches across and to get your stitches per inch just divide the stitches by the entire width um, to get your rows per inch count your rows and measure um, divide the number of rows by the number of inches in the height and that will give you stitches per inch and rows per inch right so i did that and so you know i did the swatch with um, foundation single crochet because i've started to think that I started to prefer using foundation single crochet as opposed to just a regular starting chain um, for reasons I won't go into right now, but did that, figured out what my gauge to be. Then based on that, figured out the number of stitches that should be in my, my sleeve and upper body section um, based on the math. And when I started this, did the number of stitches. For some reason, I got six extra inches. Now, I'm gonna tell you it was late, um, probably a little bit later than I should have been starting a sweater. Um, but I counted, the, the number of stitches was in fact correct. Um, I was watching TV, I thought maybe, you know, I'd gotten distracted, I couldn't, but I couldn't figure out what I could have done wrong. I went to my mom, I was like, mom, you know, can you see what I've done wrong here? She was going through her resources. We couldn't figure out what the problem was. Now, I probably should have just, you know, gone to bed at that point. But I was like, I, I want to be at a certain point. You know, I want to have gotten this far before I go to bed tonight. That's really bad when you dig in your heels like that. You drive yourself fucking nuts. But what I ended up doing was ripping out what I'd done. And I started it over, but I just did regular chains and then a row of single crochet in that chain rather than um, doing foundation single crochet. And for some reason, it came out perfect. It's the exact number of stitches that I need it to be and it's the exact length that I need it to be. However, it shouldn't be because I did something different. Here I used foundation single crochet and here I did not. Why would I get the exact same gauge for both of those? Why was my gauge so off? So I I had six extra inches. I counted the number of stitches in those six inches and figured out the gauge for just that section. And it was very, very close to what my gauge was supposed to be. My gauge was supposed to be like six and a quarter stitches per inch. And I think that section came out to be like six and a third stitches per inch. Um, I mean, riddle me this shit. I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know how the, those extra six inches could have been so close to gauge and still existed still why that thing was still six extra inches 
So I have a solution that works. I have like a little workaround. I have a thing that I can do so that I can just go ahead and start this garment. But obviously this is something I'm going to have to address going forward. And to tell the truth, this is what happened with the off-road sweater. I did do a gauge swatch. I did try to figure out what my, um, my gauge should be and how many stitches that would mean I needed to start my sweater with. But when I started the sweater and my numbers were off, I was just like, fuck it. And I ignored my gauge swatch and I just guessed the number of stitches. It worked out that time, but it probably won't always work going forward. So I need to figure out a reliable way to know that I'm going to get the same gauge between my swatch and whatever garment I'm starting. And, you know, I'm still very committed to doing what I'm doing now, which is trying to work without patterns for this very reason. I need to learn these kinds of things. If I really want to um, be the kind of maker that I hope to be, I have to figure these things out. Um, unfortunately, it, it seems to be one of those situations where everyone has to reinvent the wheel for themselves. I haven't found a, a lot of resources. I would say I don't I haven't found as many resources as I think knitters have. Um, discussing the specifics of design I will keep looking and if you know of any please let me know however if anyone out there has a guess as to why two pieces that I use two different techniques for foundation single crochet no foundation single crochet ended up coming out to the exact same gauge which is what I needed please let me know <laughs> because I need to have a reliable way to determine the number of starting stitches for my projects going forward Okay, so that was that. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about was I just got my new issue of Simply Crochet Magazine. Now, spoiler alert, um, I believe if you buy these at the store, if you buy them at craft stores, at Barnes & Noble, what have you, you will be a month behind, you'll be an issue behind subscribers, I think. So this is issue 86. So if you haven't seen issue 86 yet, if 85 is what's on the newsstands um, and you don't want to see, um, I will be discussing some of the things in here. So just fair warning. So they always give you a free gift of purchase and this issue, the free gift was what they call Simply Crochet Edits, which is just a little booklet of patterns. Usually um, they have a particular theme like I know every year they do a summer shawls issue and it's usually also sponsored by a particular yarn company this one is West Yorkshire Spinners so all of the yarns in this booklet will be West Yorkshire Spinners yarn but I wanted to talk about this issue of Simply Crochet I started subscribing to Simply Crochet this is my second round of subscription with them because I've gotten a subscription from one of my sisters for my birthday like a little over a year ago and then I thought about it and I ended up resubscribing but I don't believe I'll be renewing my subscription when this um, one runs out I was initially attracted to simply crochet magazine because their cover um, project is almost always I, I want to say it's always a garment it's always a top of some type some type or one issue they had this really cute um, crochet overall situation that I still mean to make but because my interest is in um, crocheting garments, I thought this was kind of like right up my alley. Um, so inside, I'm just gonna show you their like index page. So these are the projects you will find inside. So you see there's some pillows, there's some sort of like cup holder situation, magazine rack, coasters, there's a mandala, some stuffed animals um, over on this side. There's a mobile, there's a scarf, sweater, another pillow, dog mat, pom-pom, basket. And I saw this and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, who is this magazine for? I, I want us to have a conversation about this because there's nothing wrong with the specific patterns, right? I don't... I mean, some, you know, you'll always, you, you see a magazine and you'll always like some patterns more than others, but I don't understand who their customer is because what I want to know from you all is, are there people who are making all of these things? Are there people who are crocheting 
all the things ever. Are there people who are making clothes, accessories, housewares, keychains, pet items, home decor, it's, it's, and amigurumi? Is, is that a thing that's happening? I, If it is, please tell me. I'm not trying to argue that, that it's not happening. I'm trying to find out if it is. Are there people who are making every single thing from mobiles and wall hangings to pet items and toys and clothes? Because if not, who is this magazine for? And I, you know, Crochet Magazine or Crochet Magazine, because I don't know why it has an exclamation point, um, will also do like some housewares and different kinds of items. I think Interweave Crochet does the best job of keeping things kind of focused on clothes, although they will still have one or two other items. Um, and if you are like me and you really want to make crochet clothing more so than anything else, Interweave Crochet is really like your best bet as far as the English language publications. Um, and I don't know what the future of Interweave Crochet is because, you know, their publisher went bankrupt and their assets have been sold off. I don't know if, sorry, it might be raining. Um, I don't know if whoever buys the magazine is going to keep it going. And my concern is that if Interweave Crochet goes away, <laughs> this, is, this is what we're left with, you know, with Simply Crochet and Inside Crochet and Crochet Magazine, which isn't really speaking to my interest as a maker. But who is this speaking to? Who is this for? I don't understand this conversation that's being had where you just crocheting all the things ever all the time and using really large yarns. We're not even going to get into the fact that you will not see for the most part like fingering weight or even sport weight yarn in this magazine. Um, again, Interweave Crochet is the only magazine I've seen that has had um, a significant number of fingering weight projects in it, which again, I'm just going to say is what I like in terms of making crochet garments because everything can't be all chunky, right? Who is this magazine for? My concern is that crocheters are not being given access to the same kind of conversation that knitters are being given access to. So if you look at magazines like Vogue Knitting, um, Pom Pom, Lane, you're seeing a focus on clothing, you're seeing some important articles being written about just what's happening in knit world at the moment. You're seeing, access, you're seeing um, you have access to international viewpoints from these types of magazines which is something that is really really lacking in the discussion about crochet because you know in latin america for instance you're going to see a lot of lightweight garments you're going to see a lot of bathing suits um you in some places you're going to see a lot of color work in some place i know like eastern europe and russia you tend to see things that are made a lot out of like um, crochet thread a lot of lace work um but we're not seeing that in these magazines. We're not having that kind of conversation because I feel like there's this assumption that one, we're not really making garments. We're doing all of this stuff. <laughs> and I'm concerned that there's an assumption that we don't want to learn those things. It, it seems like people are talking to, are having a very adult conversation with knitters about they're making and really giving them access to resources for learning, whereas crocheters, not so much. And I'm just wondering if anyone else is seeing this, if anyone else has thought about this and what you all would like to see from your crochet magazines, because right now I'm not seeing what I would like to see. I know um, Vogue Knitting tried to do some crochet issues and there was actually pushback from knitters and they haven't done a Vogue Crochet, I think, since like 2014 or 2015. I mean, we were literally being like excluded and shut out very specifically by people who were saying, why is there crochet and what's supposed to be a knitting magazine? Um, I'm hoping that as um, 
more people take advantage of digital publishing and things, tools that are making it a lot easier for people to have direct access to their audience. I'm hoping that maybe someone will realize that we need to start having some of this conversation in crochet and we'll start seeing um, different kinds of publications pop up because we're seeing a lot of indie publications pop up in knitting. And I'm really curious why that hasn't translated to the crochet community. And I was just wondering what you all think about that because I have to be honest, it is a source of frustration for me. Um, yeah, so. I say all that to say I probably will not be resubscribing to um, Simply Crochet. I will probably just go to a newsstand as needed to purchase the issue that has the summer shawls booklet because it's nice. Um, I just wore a summer shawl that I made from that booklet um, yesterday. If you look on my Instagram at Crochet Chris, Chris spells C-R-Y-S-S, -S, you will see my summer shawl. So as, since I just mentioned um eastern european crochet designers i did want to show you this woman's um instagram her name is jelena nemchenko and she i believe she is based in latvia and her instagram is oh i don't know why i'm getting that weird iridescent thing but if you can see it the malo design and i want to show you a couple of things on her instagram so she just made this dress for herself. Check. Oh, I don't know why my camera is reacting like that to the phone. So I'm going to ask you all to check out her Instagram. But even with the, the funky iridescent thing happening that I cannot explain, I did want to show you this one thing. So there's this beautiful lace skirt. And then on the next image she included, there's a stitch pattern for it, right? She said she found this online. She didn't know the name of the designer. I think this is something that's in her queue that she's planning to make. But this is what you will see as far as a lot of Eastern European and Russian patterns. You will not see row by row, step by step, hand holding, telling you how to make that thing. What you will see is a picture of the finished good and a picture of the stitch pattern. And basically, it's just like, you know, go forth and crochet, right? You know, like, take that stitch pattern, do what you want with it. And people like this woman, who is um, the Malo Design, M-A-I-L-O, on Instagram, she's able to take that stitch pattern and she's able to make herself something because that's where her crochet skills are and that's where I want my crochet skills to be. And I don't think we get there from this, from this and the kinds of patterns we see on online. And I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna go ahead and say the controversial thing. Um, I'm concerned about the number of patterns I see on um, Ravelry and that independent designers are selling, whereby they, um, they there's a lot of hand-holding. Not only are you getting the row-by-row -row instructions, but you're also getting uh, photo tutorials of each step and a lot just a lot of explanation so that when you buy a pattern book a garment pattern will be three four pages right when you buy these patterns online they're gonna be like 12 15 pages because there is so much extra information usually before the pattern even starts there's like this whole missive that says you know this is gonna be simple and here's where it might get tricky and it's okay and you should know about this part ahead of time and Personally, I think it's on you to read the pattern before you start working with it to figure out where you might need extra help or whatever it is. Um, I'm concerned that we never get to, as crocheters, we're never going to get to where Miss Nemchenko is by following the patterns we're given. And unless you decide to take it upon yourself to try to learn how to make things just from sight or learn how to make things you know by figuring out how to do your own designs I feel like we're going to be kept at um, a very remedial level in crochet and one of the ways to address that is by exposure to these um, designers and crocheters in other parts of the world who are working differently from the way that we are here in the US and in the UK so I'm hoping that's something that we will see 
change and I'm wondering again if anyone out there has had some of the same thoughts that I have had because I, I think we're being a little bit handicapped by designers who are being just a little too helpful. So I know one of my goals for myself and everyone's not gonna have the same goal, but one of my goals for, for myself is to take on a challenge like that, to take a, um, a stitch pattern and just make a thing based on that attractive stitch pattern, the way a lot of other people seem to be working. And that's going to be part of my journey. So hopefully that's where I will get. That said, I do have a couple of acquisitions and honestly, I've had these for a little while and I just kept forgetting to show them to you. Oh, oh sneak peek. Um, so I just wanna finish this up by um, showing you some yarn that I got. And I know some of you may be thinking, didn't she say she wasn't gonna buy any yarn? I did. Now the subscription box, didn't count when I said that the subscription box didn't count because it's a subscription and I knew the yarn was going to be coming but I saw this yarn online and I've actually never worked with MCN so I was just like you know what I'm going to go ahead and get it this is from Sock Obsession Yarns and I have been following her account on um, Instagram for a while and this is called Cherry Story and those pops of that cherry red in there or what did it for me i couldn't i couldn't resist i got two skeins and it was a little pricey i'm not gonna lie i think it was 30 i want to say it was 37 that's something i'm gonna try to do with my podcast i'm gonna talk numbers <laughs> um i think this was 37 per skein but it's 600 yards and I already have something of a plan in mind for what I'm going to do with this. Um, so it won't be sitting around unused for too, too long, but it feels incredible. It's beautiful and I couldn't resist. And I think when she, she posted them on Instagram, she said she only had like two or three in stock. So I felt like when she said, oh, only three of these in stock, what she was actually saying was, Chris, buy these now. <laughs> so I took heed and I bought them and I have absolutely no regrets. But then my Jimmy Bean box arrived and I was actually going to wait and like open it on camera, but I was like having a bad week and I was like, you know what, my, my box of yarn is here and I want it and I'm gonna open it now. So here it is. <gasps> oh, look at this people. It is La Bien Ami. This is, this yarn is like mythical to me. I have been hearing about it. I've been seeing it. Um, you know, it was on, I think Christy Glass interviewed this, this dyer everyone's talking about this yarn and it, it was like holy grail yarn for me so when I opened this box I think I actually kind of like sang out like La bien, la me, because I was so excited to see it um the colorway is I don't know oh it's called cold brew and it's got these gorgeous flecks of like some purple and some blue is in there um, again, I'm going to try to come up with some sort of color block project or something that will allow me to make a garment out of one's game. I know that's very ambitious, but I think it can be done. Um, I think um, I'm going to try to do something kind of like a vest maybe with this, not like a full sweater. Excuse me, we're all going to have to ignore this cowlick that has decided to visit for this episode. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking best. And like I said, I, I'm doing this thing now that I'm really excited about. I like look at a skein of yarn and I'm, I'm already starting to be able to see it as something. I get this idea of what I want it to be. I'm starting to design in my head. I guess that's what I mean. I'm starting to think in terms such that I'm already giving myself permission to figure out for myself 
what that skein of yarn is going to be as opposed to my normal process which was you know wading through all of my patterns and trying to find the right pattern for that yarn and so I feel like having just started trying to learn how to design things for myself I'm already realizing like tangible benefits from this so I'm really excited about this journey and that means I'm going to be making more and better use I think of like my pretty lovelies that I pick up along the way and hopefully you all will stick around to watch me as I try to figure out how exactly to do that so I think that's it for now because it is definitely going to rain so I do want to get my laptop indoors but um, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and stay stitching <laughs>